No matter who you are or where you live, chances are that alcohol and drugs are easy enough to get, if you want them. Maybe you can sneak a bottle from your parents' liquor cabinet. Or some beer at a friend's house. Your older brother or sister might even offer to let you try some pot. Your best friend could try to convince you to use crack or take a pill that he or she says will make you feel great. Hi, I'm Keith Hernandez. What you're about to see are some common ways drugs and alcohol come into our lives and how easy it can be to start using them. You know, I have my own problems with drugs. It could have cost me my career as a baseball player as well as my life. Anyone who's ever had an alcohol problem or a drug problem knows how hard it is to quit. That's why it's so important not to start in the first place. You are going to learn that when friends, your brother, your sister, or some older kids say, go ahead and try it, you can say no. No one can make you drink alcohol. No one can make you smoke a joint or try some other drug. No one can stop you either. The decision's yours. It has to come from you, not from me, not from your parents, not from your teacher or anyone else. I'm only going to give you the facts. You have to make up your own mind. But after you see how easy it is to get involved with alcohol and drugs, after you see how some kids like you handle situations where they had to make a choice, then maybe you'll decide that you can say no to a drink or a drug. <laughs> refrigerator for a snack for you and the kids. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, and I'll be back around four. Okay. Oh, and before I forget, there's the number where I'm going to be in case there's any problems, all right? Mm-hmm. All right, bye, kids. See you later. Where are you going, Mom? Oh, I'm going to a meeting, honey. Can I come, too? No, you can't Olivia. Bye, Mom. Bye-bye. Well, this is a pretty picture. Okay, kids. You play a game, watch TV. We're going to be in the kitchen. <laughs> Should they be left alone like that? <sighs> they're always left alone. Mrs. Hartley doesn't mind. Yeah, but they seem so young. <sighs> you worry too much. You take everything too seriously. You need to loosen up. And I have just the thing. A magical secret formula guaranteed to make you feel good. What's that? A beer? Yeah, you need a drink. Maybe then you won't be so uptight. Be serious, Olivia. I don't need a drink. Drinking's great. It makes you feel good. Besides, they won't miss it. You saw all that beer. You're crazy. Don't be such a baby. Nah. Here, have some. What are you afraid of? No, thanks. I don't feel right about it. And if my mom found out, she'd have a fit. Oh, and mine wouldn't. She should only know. Should know what? Olivia, Olivia! Okay. Amanda fell down and she won't get up! <sighs> oh, you'll be okay. It's just a small scrape here. Come on, let's go in the kitchen and clean you up. Put a band-aid on it, okay? Okay, come on. <laughs> Joni didn't have the following information, but she said no anyway, even at the risk of losing her best friend. That takes a lot of courage. Here's what you should know when it's your turn to decide. Alcohol, like cocaine, heroin, or angel dust, is a very powerful drug. Beer and wine are just as addictive as scotch, gin, or vodka. Research shows that within one to three years, a young drinker can become an alcoholic. An important growth and development gland the hypothalamus, at the base of the brain, is also a signal center. It receives messages and sends them to different parts of the body. This gland is most unbalanced during preteen and teen years. A 
Attacking it over and over with drugs or alcohol can physically hook the young user or drinker. Continual drinking can cause severe stomach pain, ulcers, brain and liver damage, and lung or throat cancer. These are only some of the health problems related to heavy drinking. A large amount of alcohol consumed very fast can kill a person. Alcohol slows down the body's systems. A large dose may short-circuit brain signals to the heart and lungs, stopping heartbeat and breathing. Kids who steal alcohol get caught. Sooner or later, someone will discover that the contents in a bottle have disappeared or beer cans are missing. Young problem drinkers want company, especially when they understand that what they're doing is illegal. In their minds, drinking becomes acceptable or okay if everyone is doing it. A beer? Sure, maybe then you won't be so uptight. Don't let someone else decide what you should do. Olivia tried to decide for Joni. She tried to convince Joni that she needed to drink to grow up. You're such a child. Just take a sip. It's not gonna hurt you. But Joni said no. This was a smart move. No. Learning to drink is not being an adult. Joni no. taking care of Amanda no. when she was hurt is an example of what it really means to be an adult. Let me clean it all up, okay? Many of you have parents who have set rules for you. Places you can go, friends you can see or cannot see, and times you must get home by. You might have promised your parents that you will not drink or try drugs, but that doesn't mean there won't be a situation when, like Joni, you will have to make a difficult decision. I don't think he's in there. I bet he is. He never comes out of this room on Saturdays until dark. He sleeps all day long. He's a marathon sleeper. Is your brother a vampire or something? I don't know, but he sure acts weird. Doesn't your mom get mad? If I'm in my room for more than 10 minutes, my mom bangs on the door and says, Honey, what are you doing? Come out of there. Keep me company. Stuff like that. Mom did that to Kevin for a while. Then she stopped after he started yelling and telling her to leave him alone. What really makes me mad is that he's really mean to me and treats me like a baby or pretends like I don't even exist. Just because he's a senior and he's going to college, I'm not allowed to set foot in his room. No one is, not my mom or my dad. They do whatever he says just because they're afraid he's going to move out. He doesn't even play basketball with me anymore. Like I said, he's too weird. My sister's the same way. She has a nervous fit if I go into her room when she's not home. But she still talks to me. Sticks up for me, too. I don't think Kevin's in there. It's too quiet. Let's look and see. No, don't! Don't worry. He's not there. Let's go in for just a second. He'll kill me if he finds out I've been in here. How is he going to find out? Don't worry about it. He won't know. Okay, but you gotta promise not to tell anybody we've been in here. This place is a mess. Makes my room look like a hospital. Where do I tell Mom? You can tell her, remember? We're not supposed to be in here. I forgot. Hey, maybe we better go. Hold on, I just want to look at his tapes. Hey, what's this? What do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing? I told you never, never to come in here, ever! Hey, cut it out, Kev. Let's be adult about this situation. Now, do either of you have a clue as to what this is? Sure, it's pot. And Mom's gonna kill you when she finds out. Hey, way to go, Sherlock. She won't find out. Hey, cut it out, Kev, huh? My job. This stuff is for older guys like us. But since you're so smart, we're gonna let you and your little friend here try some. You are? Sure we are. Right, Kev? I don't know, Rick. Hey, come on. Take out a little insurance, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but you can't tell your parents. Uh, go ahead. Do it! No! You do it. 
No way. Come on, John, let's get out of here. Hey, not so fast, kids. One word about this to anyone. You know, friend. You understand? Think they'll tell? Not John. He knows I'm in enough trouble as it is. Do you think I should tell my parents? I don't know. Were you gonna try it? No. My sister says the stuff screws up your head. Besides, I hate smoke. Yeah, I know. I hate it too. John and his best friend Billy didn't let Rick and Kevin make them smoke pot. It was a tough decision, but John still has a big decision ahead of him. Should he tell his parents? Well, that's up to him. But here are some facts that you should know if you ever find yourself in John's position. There are some 450 known chemicals in marijuana. When smoked, these chemicals increase to 2,000 or more. The chemicals from one joint stay in the body for one month. The chemical known as THC is the one that produces a high. Highs can vary for each person. Some people say food tastes better or colors seem brighter. Others say they get very nervous and paranoid, thinking everyone is out to get them. Years of research have now conclusively shown that long-term use of marijuana impairs memory, making it harder to learn. Marijuana eventually damages brain tissue. Marijuana also has more cancer-producing elements, tar and carbon monoxide, than cigarettes. Experts say a single joint is equal to a full pack of cigarettes. Very often, older brothers and sisters turn younger kids in their family you on are? to drugs and alcohol. Many of you probably look up to your older brothers and sisters and think if they do something, then it must be okay. Wrong. Brothers, sisters, parents, relatives, and friends who drink alcohol or smoke pot are not making intelligent choices for themselves. You can't tell your parents. Although it's hard to accept, people you love and respect sometimes do dangerous and foolish things. In many cases, drinking alcohol and smoking pot lead to the use of harder drugs. That's why it's wise to tell your parents about a brother or sister who is using either drugs or alcohol. The person may need help and won't get it unless you speak up. Hey, not so fast, kids. One word about this to anyone, and you'll regret it. You understand? Don't let older kids intimidate you with force or threats like Kevin and Rick tried to do to Billy and John. It's your decision whether or not to tell, not theirs. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. 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 Get in the car. Oh, no. Not again. Look, I'm doing you a favor, so get in the car. She's been drinking. I hate when she does this. Mag, get your butt in the car. You too, Cindy. Let's go. You go ahead. I'll get another ride. But there's no one here. Don't be silly. Inger could drive. She got here, didn't she? Look, I don't think it's a good idea. I'm gonna go in and call my dad. You can wait with me if you want. No, I can't do that. Ingrid will get in too much trouble. Look, it's a short ride to my house. Your stuff is there and you're supposed to sleep over. Come on, Cindy, please. Are you coming or not? I don't have all night. I have a party I have to get back to. All she needs. Come on, Cindy, please get in. No, your sister's drunk. I'm gonna go in and call my dad and have him pick me up, and that's final. Fine, let's go, Ingrid. Look, I had a few drinks. So what? I can still drive perfectly well. I can drive. So come on, Cindy, get in the car. Thanks, but I don't feel so well. I feel, I feel sick to my stomach. I 
think I'm gonna sleep at home tonight. I'm gonna go in and call my dad before Mrs. Kylie locks up. Bye, Maggie, I'll call you later. Go, Ingrid. Cindy's decision to tell a lie so that she didn't have to get in a car with someone who had been drinking was a good idea. When you face a situation like this, you should have the facts so that you can make the safest choice. Auto accidents kill 14 teenagers every day. Many of these victims made the mistake of riding in a car with someone who'd been drinking. The number of passengers who die almost equals the number of drivers who lose their lives. People who have trouble talking, whose speech is slurred or jumbled, usually have a blood alcohol level of 0.10%. In most so states, what? this I means the person can legally be judged intoxicated. I can drive. A person with that much alcohol in their blood is 12 times more likely to have an accident. No matter what the driver says, alcohol reduces his or her ability to drive safely. I need to call my dad to get a ride home. Oh, OK, Cindy. I'm glad you're not now. It's about to lock up. A person only thinks his or her reactions and judgments are sharp. The more alcohol, the less skillful the driver will be. It's only a short ride is a poor excuse. Most accidents happen close to home. Hey, Dad? Yeah. Can you come pick me up? It's cool. I'll, I'll explain to you. Whether you have to go one mile or 10 miles, no one is doing you a favor by offering you a ride after they've been drinking or using drugs. What Cindy had to do is at least 100 times harder if the driver is an adult, like a friend's father or mother. No matter how old they are, you can still refuse to get in the car if the driver has been drinking. Just tell the person that you have to call your parents. If you have to, lie. Any lie that keeps you out of a drunk driver's car is a good one. If your parents can't come to pick you up, who can? Memorize or keep a list of important telephone numbers with you. The list might include a neighbor, an aunt, or the nearest taxi cab company. Keeping Ingrid's secret is not helping her or protecting her. Young people who drink must realize the risks they are taking, especially if they are driving a car. Max, I do not know what your friend's problem is. I'm so sure. I had a few drinks. Big deal. You just better not mention any of this to mom or dad. If you ever have to make a decision like this, remember that you are not only protecting yourself, you may be saving someone else's life. Step into the bathroom and get me a beating heart. Yes, that one, the blue one. Bring it here. Look at it, pulse. I should put it in the monster's chest now. We need it that's upside down. Put those pipes up there and close the chest. I'm really glad you asked me to the movie. Yeah, me too. Hey, what are you doing? That stuff's dangerous. Oh, it's safe. My brother and I tried it yesterday. Want some? I guarantee you, you'll love it. Thanks, but no thanks. Come on, don't get mad. I want some pizza after the movie. I guess. I mean, sure, why not? I guess. I mean, sure. Come on, it'll be fun. Put a little enthusiasm into it. Let's see. Get a large pizza with extra cheese, uh, pepperoni, garlic, mushrooms, onions, green peppers, olives, anchovies. Ugh, I hate anchovies. Step up the main power! <gasps> Just wanted to see if you're listening. What does that sound? Extra cheese sounds good. Nah, nah, everything on it. We'll make... We'll love it. And we'll make complete pigs out of ourselves. Hey, you'll see.
I'll be back in a minute. Why don't you order while I'm gone? You're not gonna... Oh, you must really think I'm stupid. rearranging the mice in Adler's lab. Adler was so mad, he looked crazy. His face turned bright red and he could hardly breathe. He was nearly choking. It was so funny. <laughs> then Mrs. Somers came in to see what was going on. Something drink? Uh, Rupert will be fine, thanks. And then she and Adler started to scream at each other because he had disrupted her class with his screaming. So she begins flapping her arms and screeching like this huge bird. And he stands there with his eyes nearly bulging out of his head like this mad scientist about to destroy the world. <laughs> what a sight. I guess you had to be there, though. Anyhow, I, I really hate English. For, um, Just wait till you get into the 10th grade. It's the worst. Mrs. Finch, she's so old. And she hits her head on the blackboard because she can't see at all. It's really pathetic. Aren't you going to have any pizza? Yeah, I'm not that hungry. Besides, we can take it home with us. You want to get out of here? Okay, let me just finish this. I'll be right back. Hi. Hi. Hi, guys. Where is he? In the bathroom. So, how's it going? Okay. Just okay? Just okay? This woman is out on a date with one of the world's cutest guys, and she says just okay. I know, a cuter and older guy. I hope you girls are talking about pizza. Hi, Hi Dennis. Dennis. Why don't you finish this? We're about ready to roll. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. You no, know, she didn't look very happy. I know. It's weird. Hey, but we left out. They hardly eat a thing. Yeah. There you go, ladies. Well, I guess it's time for me to be going on. Not yet. Come on. I don't want to. Don't worry. You're with me. No. I only want you to try it once. Paul's girlfriend does it. So does Mike's. How do you know? They told me. I don't care. I don't want to. I'm going. Many people, like Megan, are afraid their dates or friends won't like them if they don't do what is wanted or expected of them. We all want to be liked and accepted, but that doesn't mean we always have to do what our friends say we should do. Megan's strength and her ability to say no are in all of us. Here are some important facts to help you decide what to do if something like this happens to you. Many people think cocaine is a harmless high, but it is actually a very dangerous and addictive drug that can lead to unnecessary accidents, illness, and death. Cocaine releases a substance in the brain called dopamine. This naturally occurring chemical substance signals pleasure. Cocaine upsets the normal balance of dopamine, causing a rush or a momentary feeling of intense pleasure. Normally, dopamine returns to storage in the brain after use. I want to get out of here. OK, let me just finish this. I'll be right back but cocaine causes it to leave the brain entirely. This causes a crash or a feeling of depression. Cocaine is also processed and sold in a far more addictive form known as crack, base, or rock. Because a higher percentage of the drug enters the brain, addiction is five to 10 times more powerful. Some teenagers have reported being hooked after trying crack for the first time. In a six to eight week period, users can become severely dependent. 
Cocaine and crack addiction cause other symptoms, such as anxiety, paranoia, hyperactivity, violent outbursts, weight loss, sleep loss, convulsions, mood swings, and other kinds of abnormal behavior. The addict often continues using cocaine or crack to the financial and physical detriment or destruction of themselves, their families, and their friends, unless help is sought at the onset of addiction. You've heard important facts about alcohol and other kinds of drugs. You've learned how to deal with some common pressure situations. But if you're still unsure about how you would respond in a similar situation, think about this. How many times have you said no to your sister when she's asked to borrow your favorite sweater? or your brother when he wanted to use your bike. Saying no to these things is almost automatic. You can say no just as quickly and easily when someone offers you a drink or a drug. Make a pact with yourself. Just say no. It can be that simple. The decision is yours. Remember, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. After all, you are responsible for you.